Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson number 184, I will show you how to run what's called an architecture kata session, how to do an architectural kata, and why this exercise is so valuable. You can get a listing of all of the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. An architectural kata is a way of practicing software architecture. It's a way of being able to gain those kind of architectural skills to create an architecture from scratch or even hone your architectural skills. An architecture kata, the word kata, by the way, being a Japanese word for form, a small targeted exercise that's used as building blocks for larger solutions, and that's where it gets its name. An architectural kata is a problem statement, and basically it allows you to take that problem statement and create an architecture for that. Now, you can certainly run or do an architecture kata individually by yourself. However, the value of architecture katas really come in from doing these as a team, like let's say from within your company or a group of friends. So usually you'll select some sort of kata leader. Uh, typically this will be an architect so that they can kind of advise and judge uh, your solution for kind of correctness or why you did certain things. Now, an architecture kata team can consist of any kind of role or title. This is a way of learning about practicing or honing your skills as a software architect. Whether you are a developer, a tech lead, a junior architect, or even a senior architect. Generally, as you can see here, I like to keep the teams to five or less. Uh, more than five, I have not found very effective. A three to five is good. I try to keep those as odd numbers because when uh, disagreements occur, and notice I said when, um, an odd number of members allows you to vote to be able to make a decision and to move on. Now, if you want to make this a lot of fun, you could take the same architectural kata, the same problem statement, and you can actually within your company form multiple teams so that they can actually compete against one another, maybe for some prizes or just to be able to compete. <laughs> Lots of options to do this individually as a team or multiple teams. So let me show you how to run an architecture kata session and typically the timings and what the teams do to create an architecture from scratch. So an architecture kata session starts with, of course, a problem description. And this problem description describes what you're to build an architecture from. Now, kind of reviewing and understanding this usually is about a 10 or so minute time frame. And that kind of tells you the scope of these architecture kata problem descriptions. Um, here's an example of one for an architecture kata called Going, Going, Gone. Now, each architecture kata description, even if you make up one yourself within the context of your own company, which would be really cool, <laughs> each of these have four main sections. Whoops, let me go backwards here. Um, each have four main sections. Uh, the first is really just a couple of sentences describing the context. Here, an auction company wants to take their auctions online to a nationwide scale. This really is just concisely describing what we are to build an architecture for. Typically, most architecture kata problem statements um, have things about the users, the number of users, uh, the types of users or actors or roles within that system. Also, certainly, uh, the requirements of this particular system. Uh, notice that these are kept at a fairly high level because we're really not implementing this architecture, we're actually creating the architecture. And then each problem statement has some additional context, things that are happening with the business or maybe the marketplace or uh, things that you hear from uh, the business sponsors. 
So about 10 minutes to kind of go over the problem description. Then the teams embark on the first step in the kata process, which really is to define and identify those architectural characteristics, those illities. Now, I typically give teams around 15 minutes to, to give you a time frame for about how long this kind of task should take. But this task for the teams really involves taking that problem description, by the way, of which all the information you will need to create an architecture is there. And through looking at the domain, certain requirements, additional context, be able to identify and extract what are those critical driving architecture characteristics, those illities for this particular context. And then documenting those within a worksheet, such as the one I create here, uh, which you can get on my resources link in my website, uh, to be able to have it as a, a, a documentation for the team about what are our driving characteristics. This is a good format because during the kata process, you will be continually going to these and referring to them. Now, this particular step in the kata process is perhaps one of the most important because these architecture characteristics will form the foundation, the basis for your architectural solution and drive all of your architecture decisions and the trade-off analysis that you will do during this architecture kata process. Once the team has identified the architectural characteristics, they then move on to identifying and creating those logical components. Now, this is a logical architecture, the building blocks. What is your vision of how this system will probably work? This is a longer task, and I usually give teams about an hour or so. Now, if you want to give teams more time, they'll always, always ask for more time. <laughs> so if you're trying to limit the amount of time, an hour is usually pretty good. I would love to be able to give teams two hours if you have the time. Uh, the more time you give the teams, uh, the more fine-grained uh, the components will be and the more complete the solution generally will be. But that gives you a guidance in terms of about how much time uh, you should probably spend on that particular task. Uh, for example, um, in Going, Going, Gone, this would be a depiction of the logical architecture. Now, a logical architecture only shows the core building blocks, things that the system will need to do. And these logical components, um, these, are, these are void of any service, a database, user interface. Uh, notice those are missing from the logical architecture. This really just shows your vision of what are the pieces, the things that need to happen in the system, and what's the interaction with the different users or roles within that system. And also, by the way, the interactions between those building blocks, those components. Sometimes components turn into services. If we're creating a monolithic solution, uh, they may move into the user interface. Uh, they may form a domain within a modular monolith, for example. So once the logical components are defined by the architecture team, uh, the architecture kata team then moves on to select an architecture style. Um, this goes towards that physical architecture now. Usually I give about 20 minutes or so, but uh, 20 to 30 minutes is a good time for this particular task within the architecture kata. Because this is where we start wondering, should this be a monolithic solution? Uh, should we be using a distributed architecture like microservices or event-driven architecture? And how the teams decide on the selection of this is based on those architectural characteristics. You can leverage this star rating chart, which Neil and Ford and I created in our, uh, well, it was for our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, but you can also get this from my website under the resources link. Um, this shows star ratings, um, kind of a, 
a uh, quality comparison uh, between different architecture styles and what they support and what they don't support. Uh, one star being really kind of not well supported, five stars being extremely well supported. Uh, let's say that scalability was one of the things our team identified as a critical architectural characteristic. Well, you can go across this list and see, well, um, hmm, not very good here, but there's five stars there, five stars there, and five stars there. So these might be good architecture candidates. And then we apply the business context. We look at our logical architecture to see how things uh, relate to one another to be able to select our architecture or hybrid architectures. Now, once the team has selected an architecture style, the next step is to now diagram your solution. And this, I usually give teams about an hour or so to do. Again, like the logical components, teams will always want more time. <laughs> but again, this gives you kind of a range of about what time to expect or to allocate uh, for this particular task, um, even if you're doing an architecture kata alone. Now, in the diagramming of the architecture, this is where we actually create and diagram the physical architecture. The identification of databases, user interfaces, API gateways, things like queues and caches and streams, uh, these sort of constructs, these physical constructs is what the goal of this is. Now, we don't want to get too detailed here um, because we do only have an hour, but it should be depicted enough to describe your overall solution. For example, you can see here, this is a hybrid of microservices and event-driven architecture. Now, the last step I think is the most fun, and that is presenting your architecture to either the Kata leader or other team members or other Kata teams. Now, presenting your solution has a defined time limit, and it's only five minutes. And this is actually done on purpose. Uh, that five minute time frame basically forces you as a team to focus on what aspects of your solution you really want to convey without diving into the vortex of details that take hours and hours to explain. This is really good practice, uh, not only in presenting and getting in front of people, but also to describe an architecture solution in the most concise way possible where people will still understand your vision, your ideas. Now, the Kata leader, if you have multiple teams, uh, can have the other teams give a thumbs up, thumbs down, or vote, um, or basically ask questions and challenge the team about why they did certain things. Again, I like to keep that time limit on about five to 10 minutes for kind of follow up and questions. Also, the Kata leader at this point has the opportunity to be able to make some comments themselves about how the architecture team did in terms of their overall solution. And there you have it. This is an architecture kata session. Uh, whether you're doing one individually or as a team or even competing against other teams in your company, which is, is, is a lot of fun, uh, with the same problem statement, I will guarantee you, you will get different architecture solutions. And that's what makes that part fun. So I hope that you embrace this whole practice of architecture katas. It is such a wonderful way of practicing software architecture, learning about software architecture, and also honing your skills, especially with different kinds of problems than you face currently in your job at work. So this has been Lesson 184, Running an Architecture Kata Session. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Good luck. I hope that all of you listening will try this out. <laughs> it's a great way of learning about and practicing software architecture. Thanks for listening and stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture 